in this strangest of all football seasons, uh, there was another um, intriguing uh, Premier League weekend. Uh, Manchester City unbeaten in 20 games, losing 2-0 at home to Manchester United, who have not lost away from home for 21 games. So something had to give there. And uh, at Anfield, Liverpool beaten 1-0 by Fulham, which really um, is a meltdown of epic proportions for Liverpool. I can't recall, and history doesn't recall, uh, any time they ever lost five games in a row, because they never did, uh, at home. Uh, So uh, strange things are happening. Uh, I'm, I'm joined now by John Giles to discuss them. John, there's no doubt that this is the strangest season um, with no fans uh, and a bad atmosphere very often uh, and really surprising results. We start with Man City, John, and Man, yeah. U- Man United. I think we've both been very impressed by the job that Guardiola's done on this Manchester mm. City team, particularly uh, to stop them giving away soft goals, which was always a feature even of his best teams. Uh, yeah. But uh, they've been rock solid at the back. Uh, Manchester United yesterday away at uh, the Etihad. Goal in the first minute, stupid penalty, second minute, stupid penalty to give away by Jesus uh, when, you know, the United player was surrounded uh, by uh, City shirts. There was no way Anthony Martial was going anywhere. <laughs> and along comes uh, Jesus and gives them a gift. Um, yeah. But no doubt it was a, 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 a stupid error on his part. And yeah. Mar- Martial was going nowhere, was he? No. Now, what they say, I mean, do you say in football, typical forward yeah. defending. Yes. You know, there was no there was no need to do, no need to make a tackle. Uh, uh, there was, what, about four or five players, at least four players surrounded was, yeah. Martial yeah. at the time. Five yeah. players at the time. So it was, but it set the tone for the game, I mean, it was very, very, obviously a very, very serious uh, mistake to make from City's point of view, because City, as we know, keep possession a lot. And from the first minute, they couldn't afford to do what they normally do, which is stay patient, keep yeah. possession, and, and wear teams down in many ways. So they had to, to have a go at Manchester United from, from the first, second minute of the game. Yeah. Uh, and United did ex- exceptionally well. They deserved to win it over the 90 minutes. I mean, they defended well. Uh, they got a second goal as well from uh, making a break. So, um, but the first goal was was hugely important in the in the context of the whole match. Yes, and the second goal, uh, Luke Shaw scored. It was a very very good goal, and he is having a great season. Um, I, mm. We'll talk to you about him in a minute. Uh, that came about three or four minutes uh, after uh, the halftime interval. I think five minutes afterwards he scored. So two nil goal at the start of each half is a big deal. City. Normally, John, we've noticed in re- recent weeks that high press is back, the energy is back, the intensity wasn't there yesterday. No, uh, it, it certainly wasn't, Damon. But again, it would a lot of it would go back to the fir- first goal. Now, that might sound odd because a lot of game to play. But like I think United then could sit back a bit. Yes, Damon. which suits them, you know? obviously, with their away record too. Uh, they yeah. have Fred uh, and McTominay in front of the back four, uh, and they have a lot of pace up front, so they can play that counter-attacking game. Yeah, I think, well, obviously it suits, it suits them to do so, and they could have a lot of players back with City keeping possession the way they do. So it, it was it was a vital game, but but they did it well. I mean, you know, you, you have to take it on the yeah. day. Uh, City didn't perform. Uh, they, they gave the super goal away, and you paid the price for it, which they did, and United took advantage of it. And yeah. that's, 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 the way, that's the way football is. Um, and and big result for for United, definitely, yeah. yeah. Now, let's talk about Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, he's a player who has been lionised uh, by uh, critics and people in the game forever, really, for a long time. Uh, this season in particular, people have been talking about him. And you and I have a doubt about his temperament and about his willingness at times. He's inclined to sulk. And yesterday... He was very in a very sulky mood, didn't play well at all, and didn't really uh, participate in the pressing side of the game very much at all. No, he's, he's, he's a very gifted lad, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, he's, he's, his distribution on both, both, both feet, 
he can score goals. He can do all. But I, I always doubt his 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 attitude. I mean, you know, yes. if, if you get, uh, there was one ball yesterday, he got uh, from somebody. It was a poor ball, you know, but he could have made the most of it. His hands go up, and as if he doesn't expect, you know, just no respect for his, his fellow players, in my opinion. And that that's not the way to play. I mean, all yeah. the great players do what's best for the team. Yeah. He's very, very gifted. But I but I always feel the commentators, match after match, he's man of the match. Yeah. And I don't see it. You know, no. I just can't see it. I mean, of course he does great things, but he has to have, I don't think he has the right attitude to, to do it. He's always looking up at his players if there's a bad pass or he doesn't make the right pass. You know, as if to say, well, what are you doing? You know, that's not the way to, to do it. Yeah. The great players don't do that. And, and, uh, it just annoys me and irritates me watching him because he's so gifted and he can do so many good things. But he wasn't in the game at all yesterday. No, no. And the other, the, the, the last week against West Ham, yeah, he wasn't there at all. And next thing I, I hear the fellas on the telly and he's man of the match. Yeah, I mean, you know. But <laughs> yep. anyway, that's 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 my gripe over over uh, over yeah, the Brian. I I I share it uh, to a large extent. I mean, he can be scintillating, uh, and there isn't any aspect of the game he doesn't have. He he's he delivers good good balls and dangerous balls into the box. He can score goals, and I one thing I do doubt if he's really got an engine, John. You know, to go up and down the field. I think he looks to me like a lad who isn't a kind of ninety minute grinder. You know, he plays in yeah. fits and starts. Yeah, well, but well, you'd like to see him try, Eamon. Yeah, we don't know. Do we? You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> yeah. he's not. He's not going. He doesn't feel like he's not going to do it. So that's it. You, you don't. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I mean, a lot of city supporters will be listening to think, well, De Bruyne is a great player. Uh, he's great ability. There's no doubt. But to do what's needed to be done in the in at, at vital times of the game, like yesterday, he wasn't in the game at all. He was giving the ball away a lot. He yeah. was against West Ham. But it's as if he's he's. He's got this temperament, or he's got this this manner about him that uh, you know it's it's the team around him should be doing better, or he's better than them. I don't know what it is, but he doesn't do it in the in the manner in which he should be doing it. Certainly, ability wise, he's capable of doing great things. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't blame him for the loss yesterday. Oh David. no, 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 you know, it was no just... and I know you're not. I know you're not as well. But it was, it, but it, but he's, he's he's captain of the team. He should be showed, should be shown an example to them yeah. with his effort and his goal and his encouragement uh, to, to 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 the players around him. And now another, he doesn't do that. No, another yeah. player, John, a Manchester United player, who we both I think regard as as very talented, Marcus Rashford. Um, he, he's gifted lad, but. Um, in recent months, I think it's fair to say, he hasn't really played as well as you'd expect him to uh, and as he can. Um, he's been involved publicly in a very worthy cause and, in fact, I think he's received an MBE for uh, campaigning for uh, food uh, for uh, children living in deprived circumstances and school uh, particularly when they're not going to school that they get and uh, Boris Johnson uh, gave in in the end, caved in, allocated some money and he has been campaigning uh, in that way. Now I feel, uh, and I know we've talked about this, I feel that, because I did a lot of it myself, off the field stuff can drain you in a certain way and I think you agree with that, don't you? Oh, definitely. I mean, I mean football is a... It is it is a great game and it's a great life and a thing, but you have to dedicate yourself to that. And it's it's very easy to have a distraction uh, that you're not even aware of yeah. when you come to play uh, in, in these big matches. These are all big matches that these lads play. Yeah, well, Manchester United the, don't have any small matches, do they? <laughs> no, no, no. But the Premier League matches, but Manchester United in particular, I mean, yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's so easy. I've seen it over the years where, you know, top players played with them, against them. They have personal problems and it, it just knocks them off. In other words, your concentration all the time, you have to be really, really careful of concentrating on what you need to do. Yes. And now, I'm not having to go, and you know no, you're no, not having no, to go no, no, at no. Rashford because what he does has been a great cause. Uh, but I can, I definitely think in doing that cause, it can affect... Yep. Your football, I'm and the, I think it has. I mean, I I, yeah. I I agree with you on that. That it has. It's a distraction, and it's a, it's a major distraction actually in what he's doing. 
The uh, bottom which line, is a great cause. Yeah, the bottom line, John, is, and you said it many years ago when you were playing, if you want to be at the very top, uh, then you have to be selfish, you have to be deeply focused, uh, even your family takes second place, uh, and anything outside uh, that distracts you, well, whatever it is, uh, will you'll feel short of energy, short of concentration, and a little bit drained if you've been involved in anything other than focusing on the next match, the next training Definitely. session. Definitely, you have to you have to do it, Eamon. And it's it's easily to be it's very easily to be distracted. Yeah, and and lose and lose your energy. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. no because it's it's a very se- selfish you 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 alluded to there. It's a very yeah. selfish profession. Yeah. I mean, I used to go to bed every day. I mean, whether the kids were, I'd go to bed, I'd go into a hotel and on a Friday night, for example, if only yeah. the kids weren't well. Yeah. It, you know, and I'm not, I'm not proud of that, but that, that's what I felt. And I was very lucky that I had a family that, that, that uh, uh, accepted it. Yeah. Because uh, that was your profession. That's what you had to do. It's a high level of concentration, I mean, and the slightest yes. thing can put you off. Yes. And yeah. I think in Rashford's case, it's not a small thing. It's a big thing. It's a big. It's, yes, it's national fame. It's um, it's advocacy uh, for a really great cause, and you totally admire him uh, for that. Yes. Unfortunately, it isn't conducive to best performances on uh, match day. Yeah, I couldn't have put it better myself, Simon. Okay, okay, <laughs> we'll move on now, John, to one okay. of the mysteries of the season: Liverpool. There, there's an obvious. Um, answer. They lost their sixth home game on the trot yesterday to Fulham. And among the others who've beaten them at home, Burnley, uh, West Brom got a draw there. Uh, really, teams uh, at the bottom of the table. Brighton got a result there. It's really an alarming um, collapse, I'd have to say. Uh, now, they didn't, they played a weakened team yesterday because they have. Uh, Leipzig in the Champions League on Wednesday night. So they did play a kind of uh, a shadow squad, but they really only got a shadow squad when you take into consideration the fact that Henderson is now out, Van Dijk, of course, uh, is out, Gomez is out, and Matip is out. People say, well, what do you think it is? I think it's the injuries. Uh, I don't know if it's anything else, but there was an incident with Mo Salah during the week, John, which we both saw when he was taken off half an hour before the end of, of a game, and uh, you could see him shaking his head. His agent had a tweet out real quick uh, with a question mark, what's going on type of thing. What, what's your take on them, John? How can you explain the extent of their collapse? Well, it's very difficult to explain it, I mean, but uh, I mean, you would have to go on the season that was in it with the, the, the virus situation, yeah. injury situation, yeah. uh, very little uh, close season where they're back on again yeah. and, and the injuries they've had. Uh, I think what I find uh, with them, I mean, in relation to, to last year, when they were playing this high line, and I think that they could, they were successful, obviously, with that, with, with Van Dyke and these players playing. I think they're still playing the high line now. And they had that, that uh, Nick, Neko, Nico, Neko, Neko, yeah. Neko yeah. Williams. Williams, uh, yeah. yeah, found out time after time, Eamon, yeah. in, in, against, uh, against Fulham. Because I think they still have that. And I don't think they have the players. Because when they had last year, they were on top most of the time. They were attacking, attacking most of the time. And they could afford to push up this high line and catch the people offside. Yes. They're not attacking as much now, and the opposition have, have more time to 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 take advantage of them playing in the high line. And yeah. I think that's a lot to do, a lot to do with what they're they're actually failing at this year, Eamon. Yeah, and you could see against Chelsea in midweek, John, that Chelsea were hitting early long balls early in behind yes. in behind the back four. In fact, it makes amounts goal really yes. came from a situation yes. like that where yes. Kante knocked it forward so in that sense they've been rumbled and I suppose if you have the pace of I don't, I don't, it's not so much it's not so much being rumbled then. it's that the opposition now because it, uh, they don't have as good a players on the pitch have time to look up yes. and make the pass yeah, you know what I mean I do know they yeah, actually you, have time now to do it yeah because uh, in the past in midfield you had a Fabinho and Henderson pressing the ball uh, yes, and yeah, and the whole and all the other players and all the others. Now, all of them, you know. 
you don't have that. And of course, the other thing is the pace of Van Dijk and Gomez. They're both quick. Um, yes. That helps with a high line. In fact, it's essential with a high line. If you do it with players like Kabak, the new guy they had in yeah. against Chelsea, the night, uh, Williams uh, or Phillips, they don't have um, the pace, as you say. So that really is an interesting take on it. Um, the other thing, I wonder, is there more, John, that the Mo Salah reaction to being taken off against Chelsea um, and a few weeks ago now, I think we talked about it, when he said he was very upset that he wasn't made captain. Uh, yeah. I think Trent Alexander-Arnold was made captain. He said he was very upset about that. He said it publicly, which I thought was strange as well. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, very, very strange, I mean. And, and the comment that Klopp himself made the other day, uh, he must have been asked a question about players leaving. And he actually said, look, if players want to go, they can go. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. if I don't, you know, in other words, if they don't want to stay here, they can go. But, there was, but there's been no real talk of anybody leaving. Do you know what I mean? No, uh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's just odd. Um, uh, I, I think the situation with the, with the owners of the club wouldn't be good as well. I mean, yeah. it was odd that they bought the players that they did, Quebec, as you say, in the land from Preston. Yes. You know, like they're replacing yeah. the likes of Van Dyke or trying to replace them. And it's, yeah, that's an impossibility. Right. You know, so uh, I'd say he, 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 he's not in a position where he's saying to the owners, uh, this is what I want and this is what I want to get. He might be saying what, he's wa- what he wants, but getting the two players at the centre-back positions wouldn't be exa- wouldn't I couldn't imagine that would be a priority for him. No. Now, uh, I don't normally engage in tittle-tattle, and I know you don't engage in tittle-tattle, John, but on uh, BT, on the panel last week, Michael Owen was on. Now, Michael Owen, I like Michael Owen. He's a legend at Liverpool. He was a, a fantastic prodig- prodigy and scored a lot of goals uh, and was a top, top player before injury got him. But he said... Uh, in the Chelsea game, there was an incident about 25 minutes in when Mane got through, burst through into the box. A uh, Chelsea defender stuck his leg out and Mane, uh, if he'd have gone down, it would have been a penalty. Michael Owen's take on that was Mane didn't go down uh, because he didn't want uh, Mo Salah to take a penalty and score another goal. Now, you would say, ah, that's you know, the, Michael Owen is, is not stupid. Um, my take on that is, mm, I don't know if they get on. I wouldn't believe that theory for one second because why wouldn't Mane want Liverpool to be 1-0 up against Chelsea? But, you know, former players, particularly uh, of Michael Owen's generation, is not that former. He might have heard stuff coming out of the club that they don't get on. That's not a good sign either, John, is it? No, no, no it's, it never is, I mean, but, uh, you I mean, know... The whole the, premise the, the, of what Michael Owen was saying was that mm-hmm. Mane and Salah don't yeah. get on. Get on, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, it, we don't know, I mean, no. I mean, as you say, there could be some truth in it because he would know them better than, than we do, but we do know there was a match at Crystal Palace the time they won seven. Yes. And I think Mane was taken off. Yes. And he wasn't happy about it. I think he was on a hat That's trick. That's right, he was, yeah. But, so we don't know the individual uh, situations. It, 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 can, it can happen, Eamon. But, but uh, you know, I, I do know of situations in the past where, I mean, if you get the, the, the law best Charlton yes. situation, the trio yeah. there, Eamon. Yeah. Now, you you know, I think, I did, I they, they, know. they didn't get on with each other very no, well. No, no, they didn't. Bobby particularly didn't get on with Georgie Best. And they, did, they just didn't get on with each other very well. Yeah. But I never saw them no. on the pitch where they went professional. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now that 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 was those 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 three. That doesn't mean it has to be the same situation wherever you go. Of course there are personal things. I have seen players in the past, Damon, who didn't get on. Yes. And wouldn't pass the ball to each other in those situations. Yeah. In other words, he's getting more publicity than me. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's human nature. It can happen. Yes. Now, uh, we're, we're, you're, you're talking about Michael Owen, who could be in a position to know yes. more about it than we do. Yes. But, but I must say, watching them last year, Eamon, I never saw them, the three, when they weren't professional. No, absolutely no. And it's, it's a kind of straw in the wind um, yes. that, but because Michael Owen is the source of it 
And because yes. I, I, Mike Long lives not far from and has his stables and his beautiful uh, facility there for horse training uh, in Cheshire, quite close yeah. to Liverpool, all the former players would be talking. They'd know if there was uh, who liked who liked. Now, I thought it was a bizarre theory at first. I get, didn't give it a second uh, thought, really. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I thought... Yeah. I thought, well, man, he, he, first of all, he'd want the penalty, but uh, it was Michael Owen who put the idea into my head. Then I said, well, Michael Owen, first of all, Michael Owen isn't a mouth, and he's not, no. an, he's not an idiot. He's a nice young, mm. young fella, and he's, he's an, a bright young fella. And he, he's, he must have some basis for believing that Mane doesn't like Salah. <laughs> so that's well, it could well be. It, 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 it's, it's a professional thing, Eamon. I mean, it's, uh, which of them got the golden boot last year, for example? Uh, Salah, I'd say. Right. So that, 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 that could easily be. I mean, it's human nature where they say, well, how did he get golden boot? And I, I did such and such, do you know? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I, 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 wouldn't be, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't disbelieve it, let's put it that way. Okay. Because it can happen. I've seen it happen in a professional way myself with certain players uh, who didn't like somebody else getting the credit. It it it, it can happen. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Anyway, it to, can just happen. to go back briefly to the the, the larger question, which is, um, how much trouble are Liverpool in? Well, well, they're, they're in a lot of trouble now, and um, because of the results that I mean. With, the thing, the great thing about football, if there's something going wrong, it manifests itself on the pitch. Yes. I mean, if yeah. everything is right, it manifests itself on the pitch. Yeah. The fact is, things have gone very wrong for Liverpool. Yeah. You know, worse than it should be, in my opinion. Yes. So you don't know what's going on inside the place. You don't. We don't know when the club situation, with the player situation, and now a, a, a new thing Eamon, has come into it. What about Stevie Gerrard? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Who'd be a mate of Michael Owens, incidentally. But never mind, that's another story. Yeah. I think Stephen yeah. Gerrard, uh, while you've brought him up, and absolutely very rightly, this is the weekend that Rangers clinched their first uh, Scottish mm. Championship for 10 years. And he's been hugely impressive, John. Um, that's a tough job. Uh, as you know, it's a volatile atmosphere in Glasgow between Rangers Celtic. Uh, there's all kinds of diplomatic gaffes you could make. Stephen Gerrard has been put perfect. His team played good football um, and they've had to come a long way to win the championship, overtake Celtic and win it very convincingly. So he, he is obviously, um, you know, if he wants the Liverpool job, and I'm sure he does at some point, the best way to go about getting that job is to go and do what he did. Prove yourself in another league, uh, whether it's the championship or... Scottish Premier League. Yeah. Well, no, I'm only raising that subject, Eamon, because he has done extremely well, as you say, to yeah. do what he's done in that particular way. And I, I remember talking to you a couple of weeks ago, which I didn't know about, when Klopp had a down a downer at Dortmund. Yes, he did. They did. They, they finished 15th uh, mm. the year after they won their second title. Mm. So it was, a, it was a collapse, a bit like this, mm. actually. Well, that's, I'm only I'm only raising that subject because nobody knows. But is it, that there could there could be situations or, or a personality situation that this type of thing can happen, right. you know? Yeah, and it's it, it's a bit of a, co- a bit of a coincidence, more of a well, a, a big coincidence that at, at Dortmund, if it happened to him there, could it be a similar si- yes. situation at Liverpool? Okay. I mean, this is all this is all talk. I mean, that we're, 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 yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, a lot of. But that's football. Well, I'd rather hear your speculation, John, than other people's facts. Now, <laughs> one of the things that I want to talk to you about is Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel is the new manager, another German coach, by the way. Uh, mm. And you think, and I agree with you, actually, that he's done a really good job since he arrived at Chelsea. And he's made some pretty striking changes. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's brought Christensen in, for example, play seven and a half. Frank Lampard bombed him out completely. And... He's got them playing real good football. They got a great result um, at Liverpool uh, during the week, and they're bang there in the top four. And they're um, they've got to play uh, Everton tonight, who are also uh, in line or chasing a Champions League spot. Tell me about Chelsea, John, and Thomas Tuchel. Well, well there's all different approaches in management, Damon. 
You know, there's some lads with the easy Aussie ones, or not not quite easy Aussie, and and the firm ones. Like it, what he did with the with the young lad, where he put him on, subbed them, and took him off. Yeah. You know, a lot of people were saying this is bad. He shouldn't be doing that. He shouldn't. Uh, well, sometimes it can be good. I mean, it depends it depends on the personality of the of the manager. Yeah. yeah. And what he's what he's doing, what he's got to rest the rest of the players about him. They, 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 a lot of managers, I mean, successful managers that I've heard about in, in the past over the history of the game, wouldn't be very nice people. No. A lot of players wouldn't like them. Yeah. But they respect them. Yeah. Respect is what they want, I mean. Not, yes. They don't care about being liked. No. This is what I do. And a lot of the players at Chelsea might, 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 might uh, uh, buy into it because they might say, well, he was right in what he did. That lad is a bit lazy. Yes. Or they yeah. might say, I don't agree with it. But but he'd say, I don't care whether you agree with me or not. Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. Right? Now, I think he did that at Paris Saint-Germain. Yes. Yeah. He definitely improved them, I mean, even Neymar. When yeah. they were in the competition last week, there was a definite improvement in their discipline yes. and that than I had seen before. And I didn't see them very often. You saw them more than I did. Yeah. But they, they, they don't care whether the players buy into it or not. Yeah. Do they respect him? Do yeah. they want him to do? Are they scared of him? Yeah. That's another, the big thing now. Yeah. And I think he is that type of fella, Eamon. Another player, And I think he has got the best from players from Chelsea in recent times. Yeah, Aspilicueta had been bombed out by Frank and he's back in the team as well as a player I like actually. But it's interesting that's um, again that's on tonight. There's another game on tonight I must ask you about. Mm. It's West Ham versus Leeds, John. West Ham are fighting for a Champions League place, which yeah. goes to show what a strange season it is, although I wouldn't begrudge uh, David Moyes anything at all. And he has brought in a lot of grafters into that team. And West Ham are not renowned for their grafters. Tell me about Leeds uh, and where are we with them, John? We don't know, I suppose, is the answer. No, I, I tell you, I, mean, I don't think anybody could know. I mean, yeah. I, I think we, we spoke about at the start of the season, what I see with Leeds is they win matches, you don't expect them to win and they'll lose matches you don't expect them to lose. Yeah. Well, That's the way they're going to be. They could go... I, I, I mean, there's one of the teams that we were, were saying to you before a match, Eamon, put a few bob on such... A, I, I just wouldn't advise anybody to put a bet on Leeds at any time. Right. I mean, they've, they've, in the last couple of weeks, Eamon, they were beaten by Villa there and they played very poorly. The week before, they played Southampton and played brilliantly. And they've gone to some places and played brilliantly. And they're they're mid-table, Eamon. Yeah. As you know, well, everybody knows. And you don't, you don't know. It, they, they, what they'll do is, they play at West, at West Ham tonight uh, the way they play at Leeds, or try to. Yes. There'll be no tactics that this is the way we're going to play away from home. We're going to tighten things up and all that. They'll go for it. Yeah. Or whatever way, they, that, that, that's, that's the way they're going to be. Amen. Okay. So, so West Ham will have, have picked up, uh, and another uh, 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 Chelsea have picked up, Amen, as you say, and I think, and, and I'd written them off a couple of weeks ago. I know I'm going off the track a little bit. Spurs. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, last night, Gareth Bale, two goals, two good goals. Harry Kane, yes. a great goal. Now, if you're the front three of Bale, Kane and Son, you're talking... Exactly. Now could... you're talking business, Eamon. Yes, yeah. You I... know, I mean, they picked up they picked up in recent times. As you know, he didn't want Bale, he didn't... But Bale, Bale, Bale has, has proven himself in the past to be a terrific player. Oh, absolutely. And now he's proven it there. So there's... To have those three up front, I mean, they have to be the deadliest trio yes. in the league. Inc- I mean, yeah. Liverpool had them last year, but the, these are the, these. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw the goals yesterday. They were pretty goals. I did. I did. But, I you know. Yeah. I mean, Harry Kane scored a fantastic goal. Yeah. But ah, Bale, fantastic goal. Bale's had that was good. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and they've got so, and they've got Son there who didn't score. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got a trio now, actually, though, because I was I had written them off a few weeks ago. Uh, but I'm bringing them back into into the equation now in okay. the cup. So I think don't they don't they play City in the in the in yep. the old League Cup yeah. soon? Yeah, the Carabao Cup. Uh, yeah, and well, they're I'll, also I'll... they're also in the Europa League. So and yeah. you know, we know that Mourinho likes uh, silverware. So yeah, uh, have a look at Spurs now, John. There's yeah. one other manager we both like, and he's done a, uh, we think a good job, and it's Scott Parker at Fulham. Even when they were buried. Uh, they yeah. kept playing their football uh, and they got the reward yesterday um, mm-hmm. going to Liverpool and winning 1-0. Uh, he, he's encouraged them to play. He was a good footballer himself um, mm. and it's really encouraging to see a young manager in a very tough job 
uh, get promotion in the first instance playing good football and and keep doing it in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, it's good, really good job, Eamon. He, 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 if if he keeps them up, yeah, and he's got a chance of doing it now with Cruyff. Anyway, if yes. he keeps them up, I w- I would definitely have him in the running for Manager of the Year. Right. Yeah, that's a that's very high compliment, and it's a very much deserved compliment, in my opinion. I I watched them throughout the season. When it yeah. went, when it looked like there was no way out for them, but now yeah. uh, they're um, on the same number of points as Brighton, who I feel sorry for. Uh, but Brighton have a game in hand, and Newcastle are one point in front of them, uh, and they have a game in hand. But poor old Steve Bruce, it's very sad to see what's happening to Steve Bruce, John. I know that you have high regard for his for him as a you know. Yeah, he's 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 he's. he's I, I think he's a really good lad, Eamon. I, mean, I yeah. think what, what happened to him, again, it's circumstances when you're coming into a club. The supporters didn't want him. Yes. Didn't want him. Yeah. Although he was in Newcastle, but because he, he because he uh, apparently because he'd been manager of Sunderland. Yeah, he was. He was manager, they, they manager of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but it, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's just sad for him. I mean, they had a thing in the paper last week. I don't know if you saw it. I mean, did, the yeah, they fighting with the You know, lineup, fight yeah. with one of the players. Richie, and I mean, yeah. that should stay in. That should stay in. That shouldn't come outside the club. No. And it was leaked. Yeah. Which, is, again, is not a good sign, Amy, for the position he's in. Anyway, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, I feel sorry for him in that case. But, uh, you know, it, I think overall he hasn't done such a bad job at, at Newcastle. Uh, anyway, you know, I don't think he's been given a lot ah, of money. No, no, he's, but, he's, he's, no, but he, Scott Parker has done, as you say, he's, he's stuck to his principles of playing the game, playing the game, and it's coming right for him. I, I, I'd like to see him stay up, yeah. uh, to be quite honest. I think it'd be one of the big jobs, really big jobs, uh, in, in the Premiership, if he, can, if he can do it. Now, John, before we go, um, a sad uh, story. Um, Ian St. John, great Liverpool player, uh, 82 years of age, uh, you had many battles with that great Liverpool team that he was part of. Um, I think he was there, but I mean, you'll know. Uh, I think he was one of Bill Shankly's protégés, a uh, wonderful player, and he later went on after his football career, had a very successful uh, and funny show called Saint and Greavesy, which he did with Jimmy Greaves, a man of real character. Yeah, he was a good, good, terrific player, Eamon. Uh, he, he, the Shankly team when Shankly first took over Liverpool I mean, they were in the second division yes, they going were. nowhere and uh, he was one of the main signings actually yes. they paid quite a bit of money from him he came from Motherwell yeah. for 37,000 which was a fair bit of money at that time along with uh, big big uh, Ron Yates yes. centre half yes. they were two of the major signings at that particular time yeah. uh, to, to, do, to become a terrific team I mean, they were they were they, that was the first Shankly team as we know. Yes, uh, you know, with Tommy Smith and Roger Hunt and Chris Law, Ian Callan, Peter Thompson. Yeah. He brought Peter Thompson from Preston. Yeah, he's a few of the lads player. were yeah. home. Uh, yeah, were home players like uh, Roger Hunt was there, uh, Tommy Smith was there, Chris Law was there, Ian Callahan was there. Terrific players, Jerry Byrne. They were all at the club, or, or, or they were homegrown as yes. they were. But the, the signing of, of Ian St John and uh, Big Ron Yates definitely changed. Yeah. and helped them to come out of the second division and to go on and do what they did, yes. which was great. And I mean, they won the league, the cup, yeah. and the league in three seasons, Eamon. Yeah, they beat you guys in the cup final. I, I was at a cup final, I think, I remember, in St. John. Did he score the winner? He did. He yeah. scored the winner next extra time. We, we'd just been promoted that year, Eamon. That was 1965. Yes. They'd won the league the year before uh, 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 Liverpool had... Uh, and they were coming. They were on that. That was the, the great, the great, the first great Liverpool team with Shankly. Yeah. Uh, and then we played them in the cup final, uh, and he scored the winner in extra time. We took them to extra time, I mean, which yeah, was a bit yeah. of a miracle. Yeah. At that, that that particular time, but he scored the winner. Yeah. Actually, we see the photographs and scoring the winner. I was the nearest Leeds player to him. <laughs> <laughs> did Jack blame you? <laughs> <laughs> no, pro- pro- he probably did, but I didn't hear him. But, he, but Ian, Ian, Ian St. John was a terrific header of the ball. Yes, and yes. He's great time. Well, he was a terrific player, but his heading was fantastic. Yeah. He, was only, he wasn't a big fella at no, all. He was only about five foot eight, five foot, five foot nine at the most. But he had great time and he was, he was a good footballer. I mean, he, yeah. he, ha- he had uh, Roger Hunt up front he was mostly the striker man. Yeah. And Ian played off him. He was a footballer. He could come deep. He could yeah. make goals. He could score goals. He was a top-class player. Really was. Yeah. Um, just to tell you about Tommy Smith, the 
I played against Tommy when I was at United in the in the uh, reserve team match. The late Tommy Smith. Now he yeah. was a wonderful character. He was a hard man. There's no doubt about it. But I I was kind of sixteen, and we we were pl- actually playing at Anfield in a youth cup match, and um, I they we had free kick, and there was a wall, and Tommy was in the wall, and I went and stood in front of Tommy. <laughs> Bad news, Emma. <laughs> he said, "You little Irish bastards! Fuck off out of here, or I'll fucking kick you! I'll break your legs." <laughs> Two of them, he said. Not one leg, both of them. He was a real hard man, but a lovely fella off the pitch. An absolute, yeah. a big, big Liverpool legend. The great Tommy Smith oh, yeah. and yeah. Ian St John. I uh, hope uh, both of them uh, rest in peace. We're very grateful to you, John, for today. Just one last question. One yeah. of our one of our listeners, Gerard. He wants to know about Fred and what he's doing at Manchester United. I don't think Jared he's a big United fan, but I don't think he's in love with Fred. Uh, yeah. Can you defend Fred? No. No. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. I, 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 I don't think he's. I don't think he's a, a top player. I mean, to no. be honest. No. He's okay. He's okay. He can get the ball from A to B. No, I wouldn't have him as a as a top Manchester United. I wouldn't have him as one of the top players in the Premiership. To be honest, he's okay. just he's okay. No okay. more than that. Okay, there's your answer, Jared. Um, thanks uh, to John, of course, as always.